Let's cut right to the chase here on Ed Schultz, Susan commentary on health care being offered by the Republicans. We're going right back to where we were before. There will be fewer people covered. The costs will continue to go up, but even faster than what they have with Obamacare in the last seven years. Uh, Medicare is now going to be controlled by the states if this passes, meaning people like Scott Walker and Rick Scott and and Chris Christie are going to be making health care decisions for poor people in America. Now I'm starting to boil a little bit. Let me take a real jaded view of this so I can whack both parties on this. This is the Democrats' fault, too. We should have never been in this position because if Hillary Clinton had picked Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump wouldn't be in the White House. But that being aside, that was for all you Clintonistas. I just had to throw that out there. This is not Russia's fault, by the way. This is the fault of the Senate being bought and paid for by the insurance industry. Insurance executives are now going to have more power in health insurance coverage and health care coverage in this country than anybody on Capitol Hill. They've been cash whipped so hard. But you're going to hear terms like freedom, uh, choices, access to affordable care. You can make your own decisions. There's no more mandate. This is going to increase competition. The only thing that increases competition is if insurance companies can make more money in a certain part of the country. If you're running a major health insurance provider, why would you do business in a rural state when there aren't any customers? You're not going to go into a state of maybe 2 million or fewer people, like maybe North Dakota of 700,000 people, or South Dakota, 1.2 million people. Why would you flock all of your resources into states like that if there's going to be five other providers because you can't make any money? You have to look at the actuary of the, the, actuary of the insurance industry if you're going to talk about the Republican health care plan. There was actually, Jason Chavitz said today on one of the networks that, well, you're just going to have to make a decision between your new iPhone or investing in your health care. That says it all. He went on another network later saying, well, he probably could have said it differently. Oh, no, no, no. This is how the Republicans are thinking on health care. If you're going to send Medicaid to the states it's going to be less coverage. And you're going to have 50 different philosophies on how poor people should have health care administered to them in the United States of America. Government's the bad guy. Government can't do anything right. Well, you know what? Where's the march in Washington to get rid of Social Security or Medicare, Medicaid? Most Americans are very satisfied with what's being serviced to them. Now, the idea that, well, there's a lot of doctors that won't uh, do Medicaid, that's because they don't get paid enough. That's because they've been strong-armed out of it and priced out of the marketplace. And this isn't going to solve that at all. So uh, the Republicans are saying, well, our bill's only 66 pages. Look at this big thing that uh, the Democrats had with uh, Obamacare. Uh, It's going to take a long time to unpack all of this. The fact of the matter is you're going to hear a lot of generic talk about access. You know what access is? You can get access to health care anyway if you got the munana. If you don't have the money, you ain't going to get it. Okay? That's where we're going. It's health care for the wealthy. It's health care for the strong corporations that can afford it. And this idea that all of a sudden the Republicans are looking out for the little guy and the small grocery store owner on the corner, that's hogwash. It's total hogwash. Gone are these subsidies to help people buy insurance. And this idea of health care savings accounts, most Americans are two paychecks away from being broke, okay? They don't have disposable income to put away in a health care savings account. If it was good, they would have done it before. And so, you know, how much money can you actually save 
maybe twelve to fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a year in your health care savings account wow how much money do you make you're way out of the middle class you're beyond that so what the republicans are putting on the table is nothing but an appeasement to the corporations that's all this is they're not going to be able to bring down drug prices there is going to be more competition and what's going to happen here is that this is just a turd in the punch bowl replacement for Obamacare. That's what this is. And give it a year, give it 18 months, and there will be a complete turnaround of thinking by the American people that, gosh, Obamacare wasn't all that bad after all. That's how I see it. Uh, Ed, <clears throat> you know, you were talking uh, earlier about the generic and the, the nonsense. Yeah, and... I'm sorry, hold on one second. I had a really good one in my head that, and you just, you got all over it. That happens to me all the time. It's uh, called brain farts, and we should have brain farts covered in our healthcare coverage. Oh, uh, what the hell was that? It's called uh, uh, CRS. You, you, you can't remember shit? It happens all the time. It really does, you know? You know I can't remember shit all the time. Well, I'm telling you, this is a bag of dog do, that, what the Republicans are, and oh, wait a minute. They're saying it's a work in progress. Oh, we haven't gotten to the finer, final butcher shop yet. Look, this is going to hurt poor people. This is going to hurt the elderly. This is not going to be a big boon for small businesses. This is just a, a, a big thank you, wealthy people. Look what we've done for you. We've given you a tax break. We're giving wealthy people a tax credit so they can run around and line the pockets of these Republicans to get reelected. This is so unfortunate that we're in the position that we're in. We're feeling the effects of, uh, of the, the Trump presidency. I hope the president is maverick enough to see this for what it is. And listening to Trump today, it sounds like he's already sold on this whole deal. And turning health care over to the Republicans is going to do this. It's going to satisfy the wealthy. It's going to satisfy the major uh, uh, corporations. And then they're going to come back and say the sell job. Mark my words, a year from now is, well, look what we did with health care. We got so many satisfied people. There'll be a bunch of fake news out there. We got so many happy people about health care. And uh, so now we should privatize Medicare. Now we should privatize Social Security because we really have to think about the federal budget. That's where they're going with all of this in the long haul. Uh, is there any real difference between, you know, when they, they, they're getting rid of the individual mandate and they're pushing on this, uh, this the provision where you can't have a lapse in your insurance in between? Is, is that just a way to get around the individual well, mandate? Well, that, that, all that's doing, that's in a sense a mandate. I mean, it, who wants to get taxed at a 30% rate if you have a gap in your insurance? In other words, if you drop your insurance and then you go get another policy another year from now, you're going to have to pay a surcharge because you didn't have it for a while. That's a handout to the corporations. Here's something that no one has talked about today, which, of course, my family's very concerned about. We have health care through the company. Uh, are the protections from Obamacare going to be in this new health care bill? In other words, it's not about the pre-existing condition. If you've got a pre-existing condition, you can go buy health insurance. But what happens when you get sick? Will the insurance companies be in a position where they can drop people who get sick? That was a big protection under Obamacare, and the Republicans have, number one, haven't been asked that question yet. Number two, have not stated it clearly whether if you get sick, there's, a, there, there, there's no way you're going to get dropped once you get insurance. And that, of course, is big for a, a lot of Americans. You get sick, you lose your insurance. Where are the protections in this? And that's obviously what we want to know about. And when we talk about, you know, they talk about driving prices down, and they're going to drive prices down. Are we looking at junk insurance? We're totally looking at junk insurance. What the fallacy in this is that you've got Tom Price, the uh, Health and Human Secretary, sir, uh, Secretary, Health and Human Services Secretary, at the press briefing today, talking about high deductibles. High, you haven't seen any high deductibles yet until you see this load of crap that they're throwing on us. The fact of the matter is, junk insurance is a low premium, extraordinarily high deductible, but then it doesn't cover the necessities of what basic families and individuals need. So yeah, we're going back to junk insurance. There's no doubt about it. 
And do you think if this wasn't Obamacare, I mean, we know obviously it's the Affordable Care Act, but but if it wasn't the title of Obamacare, it was kind of working, well, helping people out. Do you think well, it'd be in this I, 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 th I think that's part of it. They want to erase Obama's legacy, but in a bigger picture, this is the beginning of privatization. This is the beginning of, of markets controlling everything. And if they have any measurable success with wealthy people, and if they get reelected, then they're going to move into the privatization of Medicare. They're going to move into the privatization of Social Security. The Republicans are on a mission to destroy the New Deal. There is no question about that. They've never lost uh, their focus in that regard. So, uh, some years they make progress. Some years they don't make any progress. But at the end of the day, that's where they want to go. Uh, look, I want to be wrong on this. I want to be totally wrong. But the fact is, is that everything they're doing is just throwing up crap that we had before. And it's taken a major step back. It's putting the insurance companies in the driver's seat. And they're in it for one thing. And that's to make money. And if they have to drop somebody who's sick, damn it, they're going to do it. And that's the scary thing about this. The, the Obama, and I think many people don't understand the, exactly what Obamacare was about. Obamacare was about writing a check to poor people to get them covered so they have better outcomes. So we reduce the amount of money we as a country spend on health care services. We were accomplishing that. There was no guarantee that premiums weren't going to go up. Premiums went up 20% during the Bush years for eight years. That's why the hell Obama got elected in 2008 because he had a health care plan and John McCain didn't. And so we're down the road, we're making progress, but of course they want to gut the whole damn thing and start over. And I, I, I just think it's a crab sandwich across the board. And, and uh, you know, to, to wrap this up, I mean, they make the announcement this week are we going to see a full battle in Congress over health care? Like well, the look, time? they have the votes. You know, they, they, they have the votes. Uh, uh, the, the Democrats are going to have to filibuster like crazy on this. And a lot of politics is going to be played. They're going to make a lot of promises to maybe a half uh, or how many, uh, you know, Democrats do they need in the Senate. This will pass the House. Paul Ryan will get it passed in the House. Um and they're going to view this as, hey, we're in power. And, and here's what's going to happen. They're going to get every Republican in the Senate to vote for it. Because when it comes down to the wire, you don't want to be the odd man out against Donald Trump and his Twitter feed. You don't want to be the odd man out, you know, the fly in the ointment when you don't have to be. Um, and then, of course, there's going to be some Democratic senators who are thinking about re-election in conservative states are going to try to go back and say, well, you know, this really isn't all that bad after all. We're trying to improve it and play the middle of the road. And so who knows? I mean, I I, I would be surprised if if they couldn't get this through. I, I, th I think they will get it through. Uh, the best chance I think the progressives have got right now is lobby like hell to make sure that some protections are still going to be left in there. Keeping your kid on there until he's 26, that's great. Pre-existing condition, that's great too. But what happens once you get sick? That Can they drop you when you get sick? And so that has to be clarified along with a bunch of other things. I don't trust any of the Republican governors running Medicaid programs on a state level. I don't trust... Uh, the, the, the ruthlessness that can come from parochialism in a state. That's why we went the federal route to give Americans consumer protection when it came to health care to help poor people get out of their economic situation. So I, I'm totally against what they're doing right now. That's what I got for you. That's all I got today.